I mean. Say, Blay, I'd be able to tell Ben if I saw the whole house. Oh. Hey! I wish you'd talk to her, Mother. Nice thing if somebody saw her. Father's right, Aggie. Right to learn how to behave yourself in a decent place. You notice how nobody has pianos anymore. <laughs> you live in a house of the court. You hear the children practicing all day long. It's so wild as this moment for pianos. Sit down, Aggie. Didn't you hear Henry say to sit down? Yeah, now it's so wild as but anything that's pushed out of the wire sounds like it. Oh, leave it be. Don't you realize there's somebody sitting around here? Our warrant will have to take you off your job, Aggie, and put you back in school to learn some manners. That staircase, just like this house in Mirburn in Australia. A very good sign. I never knew you were in Australia, Father. Sure, I must have told you. You've been everywhere. What did you do? Didn't I ever mention about staying in a house that used to belong to Lord Gravy or something like that? I don't remember the name. Had a fine fella. Black sheep. Came to Australia and made a pile of money. Never got married? No, a real black sheep. Lived all alone. Got peculiar in his old age with all that money. Used to keep it around the house, they said. Must have been a tough customer. That's what they say. All that money around the house. <sighs> my, my. In gold, gold balls. Some of them as long as you're old. I suppose they found it all after he died. No, I can't say they did. No. <laughs> Stop worrying about it, Mother. Well, it's interesting. <laughs> Oh, I hope Amy ain't too sick to see us. Well, Henry said she was all right. She was much better, he said. Yeah, but you know, Ada ain't a strong girl. If she's been laying in bed for two weeks, there's something wrong with her. It's very nice of this lady, isn't it? Oh, I should say. She sounds like a real fine woman. Keep your hands off, Aggie! Uh, Miss Harris begs to be excused. She hopes to meet you all some other time. Well, she ain't sick, Henry. No. Should I bring up the gramophone, Henry? Uh, I don't think so, no. Oh, well, I'll just stay out of the way, then. This is certainly a beautiful house, Henry. Go on, Iggy! Two flights up, a little room at the head of the stairs. Oh, lots of visitors today, Henry. I'm sure you've been kindness itself, Miss Aries. Ada knows that, I'm sure. But to move her now would be the killer, that's all. Any movement she'll drop at your feet. And besides, we have no place to go, as I've told you. Look at this baby. Oh, Lord, Miss Aries. We only have two rooms. That's a good idea, Mum. There ain't space now to swing a cart in. Well, but ghost all night anyway. It's still I did. And then there's the kid, mind you. I don't care to discuss it. You can please get Ada out of here today. It might be life and death, you know. Do you think she ought to I be? I told here? you I'd not care to discuss it. I believed all your bad luck stories. And I've done everything in my power to help you. I think it's quite obvious that you've imposed on me in the crudest way. I'm sorry you think that. You please oblige me by getting out of here as quickly as possible. Oh, that's more easily said than done. Why, you... Leave at once, all of you. Such a fine big house, ma'am. It's wonderful how clean it is. With only one out. Well, I was telling Mother over here how much it looks like a house I stayed in once in Melbourne, in Australia. Would you please? It's a staircase made me think of it. Same layout. Used to be a private house, turned into a larger house later when I stayed there. Leave immediately. Why don't you call the police? Lady Rana, she was a leftover from the old time. A real character, Mum. I used to stay on the top floor. That was the cheapest in those times. <laughs> Would you believe it, Miss Aries? He's never told me a word of this. How dare you? The old lady just stopped for the bottom floor in the morning. Knock, knock, knock. How do you like your eyebrows this morning, sir? Thank you, sir. Second floor. Knock, knock, knock. How do you like your eyebrows this morning, sir? Thank you, sir. Third floor. You hear what's going on? We'll have none of that, Miss Aries. Well, Mom, by the time she finally reached me, I was mighty glad to get myself a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> it was a one when I married her, Miss Aries. What do you want? What about my pay for all these weeks? Pay? My pay. It's pay. When the time comes to pay, you must pay. <laughs> oh, oh, please. Three bottles of this, please. Don't you? Don't you? Help me. Poor woman. Look, the minute I laid eyes on that staircase, I knew. <laughs> don't get her up. Still going to take her upstairs. Sure, Henry. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> oh, no! Why don't you 
behave yourself. You're just like a little animal, I gave. Uh, it's a cheap one. Let me see. There, be quiet. Uh, come see, Daisy. Don't hurt yourself, Father. No, you're not such a heavy old lady. Say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> Where are the friends that <laughs> we used to know long, long ago? Came awful sudden, didn't it, Emery? Very unexpected. Saved a lot of trouble, I should say. <laughs> well, better wait, please. Sit down, Ivy. What's the matter, Ada? Never mind. baby out of here. That's the trouble, Henry. Can't you just forget about it? No, Henry's right, Father. It's just a nuisance here, poor little thing. What about Ada, Henry? Ada stays. What for, Henry? She's done a job. Henry's right, Mother. You wouldn't want Ada roaming around the streets. See that the Italian woman gets the baby out. Whatever you say, Henry. I'm shut his nail in a room. Come on up, Henry. There you are, Henry. Ain't that nice? Nice. I'm going to bolt over the window tomorrow anyway, Henry. <laughs> I'm crazy about that, Rick. Ain't it nice, Ada? Yeah. No. 
bear it. Tomorrow then, or the day after. Keep her out. Don't be afraid, Miss Aries. I'll take care of her. I'm here. That's a good girl. We'll have a nice little walk. Don't be impatient, Edwards. What have you said, Henry? Miss Harris is a very fine woman. She has strength. She has character. That's true. Imagination. Hope. She still has hope, Edwards. Stubborn. Time, Edwards. Perhaps. There's a dealer from Paris coming this afternoon to look for Whistler. Yeah? You will also see Miss Harris. Talk to her. Talk to her, It would be comforting to have Miss Harris realize that if she ever should be in a position to appeal to anyone, no one would believe her. Don't like it. Well, I'm going to try it, Edwards. Ah, Lucy Weston is returning to London. Dear Lucy, I shall look forward to seeing her again. <laughs> what is it, Edwards? It's about leaving this place. You may if you want. I didn't mean that. How was Paris? Very nice. Buy any pictures? I sold a few. Mind if I see the list? All right. Hmm. Quite right, Henry. There's a time or two. After all, the orcs keep stuck. Well, we live here, Edwards. We are Miss Harry's best friend. Her only friends in London. They're the only ones who have cared for her since her illness. I should think that would appeal to you, steady employment. That should be the man from Bernstein at peace. Wait, it isn't. It's Peter. Peter. Show him in. Nicely done, Henry. Yes, I think so. This is interesting. <coughs> what is it, Paula? Oh, a fella named Weston Cables and his wife Lucy was killed in an airplane crash near Marseille. My goodness. Now that settles it. I think when Miss Harry hears of this, things will be much simpler. It also adds another permanency to the whole venture. For now, Miss Harris has no one but me. That should be Rosenberg. Let her come down. I want to meet this chap. Oh, Henry. I'll walk to the basement. Come around and let myself in in a few minutes. Show the man in here. Then you let Miss Harris into this room. Listen carefully, both of you. Don't let the man get away if she starts anything. Who is it, Henry? It's a dealer from Paris. Go on. All right. Take her upstairs. Sure, Henrietta. And then sometime, somehow, someone intervened too easy for you. Open up there, the police! 